In this lecture and in next few lectures, we are going to understand a concept called middleware. And this middleware concept is used a lot in ASP.NET Core applications. In fact, we have already used middlewares without knowing it. So the functions which we were passing to run method and also to map get method, those functions were actually middlewares. So a middleware is simply a function which gets executed for each request which we make to ASP.NET Core application. And by definition, middleware is a component that is assembled into the application pipeline, or we can also say the request pipeline, to handle request and responses. The request pipeline is the mechanism by which requests are processed beginning with receiving a request on the server and ending with sending a response from the server. So when we receive a request on the server, and once we have sent a response from the server, in between, we have a request pipeline. And each request goes through that pipeline. And in that pipeline, we can run some logic on request and response in order to process them. And these logics, which we run on request and response, they are present inside a function. And these functions are called as middlewares. Let's actually understand middleware with a simple example. So let's say we have an ASP.NET Core application running on the custard server. So whenever a client makes a request to this ASP.NET Core application, the server receives the request, processes it, and sends the response. But in between the request is received and response is sent, there is a request pipeline. In this request pipeline, before sending the response, the request and response can be manipulated using middleware. Let's understand how. So when we receive a request on the Kestrel server, Kestrel server creates an HTTP context object which contains request and response object. This HTTP context object is then passed to the first middleware in the request pipeline. There, the middleware can manipulate the request and response object of HTTP context object. So we have seen that the HTTP context object has a request and response object. So that request and response object can be manipulated by the middleware. A middleware can also execute some other code as well. It need not to be always about request and response object, but mostly it is used to manipulate request or response before sending the response to the client. Now, once the first middleware has done processing the request, it passes the HTTP context object to the next middleware by calling the next function. Now, this HTTP context object also has a request and response object because it is the same HTTP context object. But here, the request and response object were first manipulated in the middleware one. So here we have those manipulated request and response objects. In the second middleware, we don't have the original request and response object. There we have the manipulated request and response object. All right. Now in the second middleware also, some logic will be executed for that request. And once it is done, the HTTP context object will be passed to the next middleware. And this goes on until the request or we can say the HTTP context object has reached the last middleware. The last middleware returns the request back to the previous middleware, effectively terminating the request pipeline. So each middleware in the sequence gets a second chance to inspect the request and modify the response on its way back. So as you can see, from the middleware 3, the HTTP context object was passed back to the middleware 2. Now in the middleware 2, if we want to further manipulate the request or response we can do that so we will get that chance as well and if we don't want to do that then we can return to the first middleware from where we call the middleware 2. So here if you noticed we pass the HTTP context object basically the request and response from middleware 1 to middleware 2 to middleware 3 and then from middleware 3 the HTTP context object started returning so it returned to its previous calling function which is middleware 2 and from middleware 2 it returned to its previous calling function which is middleware 1. Now one important point to note here is that any of the middleware in the request pipeline can terminate the request pipeline by simply not passing the request to the next middleware. Basically there is no rule that each middleware has to call the next middleware. So there can be some middlewares which do not call the next middleware in the request pipeline. For example, here the middleware 3 is not calling any other middleware, right? So this type of middleware is called as 
terminal middleware or short circuiting middleware. Once the HTTP context object or the request response has gone through all the middlewares, finally it reaches back to the Kestrel server. And then the Kestrel server returns the response back to the client. Okay, so here, as you can see, a middleware is called as a middleware because it is a function which gets executed in the middle that is in between the request is received and the response is sent. Now, there are a few points which you need to remember about a middleware. First of all, middlewares are chained one after the other and they are executed in the order in which they are defined. So, this is very important to understand. The middleware functions are executed in the order in which they are defined. In order to call the next middleware in request pipeline, we need to explicitly call it by calling the next method. Also, there is no rule that each middleware has to call the next middleware. Okay, so there can be some middlewares which will not call the next middleware in the request pipeline. And such middlewares are called as terminal middleware or short circuiting middleware. Also, each middleware should perform a single task. This is very important. A middleware should be responsible for performing only a single task. It should not be doing multiple tasks. And in ASP.NET Co, middleware can be created in two ways. By using request delegate, for example, by using anonymous function or lambda expression, or by using a class. And we will see how we can create a middleware using the request delegate as well as a class in our coming lectures. So, this was a very high level overview of what a middleware is in ASP.NET Core applications. Now, let's understand middleware in practice from our next lecture. This is all from this lecture. Thank you for listening and have a great day.